My Washington journey begins in the northwestern corner of the state. Imagine having a home on the beach, looking out from your garden to the Pacific Ocean. Well, that's what Carol Ann and Tom Hyatt enjoy every day from their home in Ferndale, Washington. They've asked me to help them install a garden sprinkler so they can spend less time working on the garden and more time enjoying it. I have the system for them. Hey folks, hey. how are you? Nice Good morning. You, hey Carol Ann, nice Tom. Hey Ron, glad to meet you. I gotta ask you, why would you need water in, uh, in Washington? It rains all the time here. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've got some spells where we really need It gets dry, yeah. 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 Sure. Wanna show me the yard? We'll I'd see what you got to. in mind here. Yes, come this way. All right. Hey, you guys spend more than a little time out here. Yeah, lots of time. Look 25 hours a week. Come on, 25 yeah. hours a week? 25 hours a week. The Hyatt's garden really reflects their lives. It sits right on the edge of Lumi Bay, which borders the Lumi Indian Reservation. Carol Ann, an interior designer, has divided it into several gardens that are joined together by paths. Tom is a professional musician with a love of golf. So when he's not touring, he's out on his putting green. So you've got a lot of different kinds of plants here. Yes. Um, you have to hand water a lot of these? Yes. Now for the parts of this that you have to hand water, how long does that take you? Hour and a half. Wow. If it's uh, really dry weather, we might be out here twice, you know. And I want to show to focus on the different applications here because you've got so many different kinds mm. of plants in different situations. But we need to start uh, by connecting to your existing water supply right. somewhere. Right? Yeah. Okay. After here. the water supply was hooked up and the basic control system installed, I showed Tom and Carol Ann where they were and how they would work. So guys, here's where we're going to get the water for your irrigation system. You already had this T in line here. I took the plug out, attached some PVC, and of course this is running now underground and out to the rest of the system. Now at the other end of this actually there's something I want to show you. The PVC plastic pipe runs underground to a device that will distribute the water to different sections of the garden. This is it, right here, to what we call a manifold. Uh, each one of these is a valve and it controls a different area or zone in your lawn. Next, I take Carol Ann and Tom into the garage and show them the brains of the system. Now this is your irrigation system timer. You get a number of controls up here which will tell each of those zones when to come on, when to shut off, and how long to stay on. It's time for Tom and Carol Ann to go to work. They're digging trenches a few inches deep. Now this is where we're going to lay the plastic pipes that will serve as the main water lines for sprinklers that will water the putting green. Earlier, we placed these small red flags around the edge of the green to show us the location of the new sprinkler heads. In order to supply each of these sprinklers with water, we'll have to tap into the main supply line. That means cutting the pipe and installing branch lines or offshoots. To get this up out of the dirt right here, this is a good trick. Just take a short piece of pipe, lay it across the trench. Okay, Caroline, let's cut this pipe right here. There you go. The quickest way to do this is with an inexpensive plastic pipe cutter that uses a blade and ratcheting action to easily slice through the pipe. Very nice. All right. In a moment, we'll rejoin so the pipes with this T-shaped connector. But first, we screw in this L-shaped fitting called an L or elbow. All right, now it's time to weld this T to this pipe right here, right? So uh, if you'll take the, the brush out. Carol Ann applies pipe There's cement to the inside of the, the inside T of the and the outside of the pipe, then pushes yeah. them together and holds them firmly for a few seconds while the glue sets. The, uh, now we're ready to attach a flexible hose, which will carry water from the supply line to the sprinkler head. We determine the proper distance and then cut the hose to length. Now this is the sprinkler head, the pop-up style right here. Now we're going to put one end of this flexible hose on the sprinkler head like that. Just wiggle it up and down as we send it. Carol Ann connects the other end, the end to the L-shaped tube. Up and down, that's it. That's it, push. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. We make Put sure that the sprinkler head is flush with the soil. Top of this, flush with the soil. Here. And then, fill in the trench with dirt. You can go ahead and help me get the dirt. Okay, now we don't have to fill it all the way. Just enough to keep this in position. Right. And then we'll move on to the next sprinkler head, okay? Yep. Great. Now one of the real benefits of this watering system is its adaptability. Pop-up sprinklers like the one we just installed can cover broader areas like the putting green. But the Hyatts also have a variety of garden plants with a wide range of watering needs. 
So the next part of their system will be designed with this in mind. So, uh, the general rule here is to glue as many things together outside the, the trench as we can. So let's start with the L. We'll begin in this small area of the garden. Tom has dug a trench for another run of plastic pipe that will bring water to this location. Using the same cementing technique as before, he assembles a short L-shaped section called a riser. Into the end of the riser, he screws a plastic T. The entire assembly is then attached to the supply line. Now this is uh, called drip tubing. Right. This is what's going to supply the water to all the plants in here. Tom, if you'll plug one end of it into that T, you kind of rotate it and then up and down and push it in. Now we're going to run this in a big circle down here and we're just going to put these stakes over the hose that will hold it in place just mm -hmm. like that, all right? Yeah. So let's start. I'm going to cut this right here. Once we've laid out enough tubing to encircle this section of the garden, we cut off the excess and insert the end of the tube into the other side of the T, while Carol Ann helps camouflage it. Then, using a punch, we puncture holes in the flexible tubing and attach smaller soaker hoses, which will carry water directly to individual plants. On the end of each soaker hose goes a water emitter. The emitter determines how much water a plant receives and how it's delivered. Some emitters drip water at the base of the plant, while others spray a fine mist onto the foliage. Some spray emitters even have interchangeable heads, each producing a different spray pattern. And it's so tunable to whatever you want to do with the system that I know we're going to just thoroughly enjoy it. As the day came to a close, I knew Tom and Carol Ann could adapt and expand their watering system any way they wished. They wouldn't need me anymore. And there was something else they could get along without. Before you go, and for all the help in putting the system in, I'd like to leave you with something that I'm not going to need anymore. <laughs> oh, I guess you won't, will you? Well, I can always use a garden hose, I'll tell you. I don't have irrigation in the motor Hi, guys. Well, thank, thank you. you. Ron. It's You're been very welcome. Great. You're thank you. This is fun. You, I learned a lot from this. Yeah. So, how long, uh, how long have you had this lavender bush? Take here? time to stop and smell the lavender. Isn't that what they say? Then it's back on the road, heading for whatever comes my way.